Perfect. All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to a tournament edition of Swag Talk. Of course, this is a show we cover the swag inside and out. I am your tour guide around the swag. See what's coming at you. And it is tournament time, man. It's finally here. The swag tournament is here, is on, is popping. Um, we got one session down, uh, one women's quarterfinal and one men's quarterfinal already have taken place. So we'll go over the box scores for those couple games. Then we got two games tonight. Um, we'll recap those when they end tonight. So you're going to get a, a, a sh like two shows a day for the next two days, and then you're going to get a couple shows, out there, I guess, like two on Friday and, and, two, on, and two on Saturday or whatever, man. We're going we, 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 we hooping it up, man. It's Swag Talk. It's basketball. attorney time. I'm hype. I hope y'all hype. Um, let's get into it, man. Hit those socials, Facebook and Swag Talk, Instagram, Swag Talk, Twitter, Swag Talk 76. Uh, make sure you hit the subscription button um, so you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you have, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let somebody else know to subscribe, man. We're trying to get to 900. And um, from now, you're going to keep on marching on. So hit that subscription button to hit that notification bell to be alerted to any video that I drop. Like the video, share them, and feel free to comment on your thoughts on today's action. So we're not going to waste now a second of time, man. We're going to jump into this um, first game. Alabama A&M, Lady Bulldogs, Arkansas, Arkansas Pine Bluff, Arkansas Pine Bluff, uh, Golden Lions. Pine Bluff pulls off the upset of the two seed, man. We open up the tournament with a 7-2 upset. Um, although I, I don't necessarily feel like this is a super, super upset because I think Pine Bluff was a pretty solid team. I mean, they, they were 10-8 and eight in conference play, so they weren't bad. Um, I think they just hit some rough spots during the season. And – they played a really, really good game. I mean, they trailed this game 18 to 12 after one. Um, and then they scored 24 points in the second quarter alone to um, take a 36 to 29 lead into the half. So they really, they really just, um, they lit it up in the second half, man. When you, when you, um, when you come out and you're down six and, and you're going to have up seven, um, you're, you're playing some good ball. So, uh, they had a bad third quarter. Now Alabama and them came out and outscored the, the Golden Lions eleven to three in the third quarter, and Pablo put together another twenty plus point quarter in the fourth, uh, scoring twenty three points in the fourth quarter, and uh, only uh, only allowing a And M to score fifteen to ultimately win this game sixty two to fifty seven. Um, the Bulldogs' season ends here. Uh, Pablo advances. Um, they'll take on the winner of Alabama State and Bethune Cookman, and that game is tomorrow um, at eleven. So they'll take on the winner of that, of that game. So we'll see. You know, if Pine Bluff got any more run in them, um, we'll see. But looking at the, the looking at the stats, the Golden Lions had four had four players in double figures, led by uh, Kariah Beck with sixteen points. Uh, she also had four rebounds and two assists. And one still, she was six of thirteen from the field, two of seven from three, and two of three from the free throw line. Uh, Tia Morgan had twelve points; she was four of seven from the field, three of five from three, and one for three from the line. She had five rebounds and five assists, and two steals as well. Uh, Jaleesa Reese had ten uh, points and three rebounds, one assist and one block, and two steals. She was three of ten from the field. Uh, Oh, and four or five from the free throw line. Uh, Maya Pete led the team with 10 rebounds um, on the day. And uh, also in double figures was Demetria Shepard with 15 points. She was three of 13 from the field, three of 11 from three and six of eight from the line. Uh, she had four rebounds, two assists and three steals. Pine Bluff would finish the night shooting. Um, they shot uh, 
32% on the night, 23% in the first quarter, 47 in the third, 6% in the – I mean, 23 in the first, 47 in the second, and 6% in the third quarter, and uh, 54% in the fourth quarter. So they, they shot poorly coming out of the start of the game and coming out of the half, but the second half, uh, second and fourth quarter, they really played really well. Uh, they were one of five from three in the first quarter for 20%, four of 10 from three in the second quarter for 40%, one of five from three in the uh, third quarter for 20%, and two of four from three uh, in the fourth quarter for 50%, giving them a total of eight eight for 24, which was 33% for the game, uh, 72% from the free throw line. They will finish the night with 39 rebounds. They committed 18 fouls. They had 10 assists. Uh, 18 turnovers, three blocks, and 10 steals. And it was led by uh, uh, Amani Free. She had 17 points on the night, six rebounds, one assist, and two steals. She was uh, six of 13 from the field, three of eight from three, and two for two from the line. Also in double figures for the Bulldogs was Tony Grace with 14 points. Um, she had three assists on the night and three steals. She was 4 of 11 from the field, 0 for 1 from 3, and 6 of 7 from the line. So that was their only uh, only double-digit scores. Uh, Jayla Cody had 10 rebounds to lead the team as well, and 9 points, so she just missed a double-double. Uh, also had a block. Uh, the Bulldogs shot 50% to open up the game, uh, 6 of 12 from the field, uh, 5 of 11 in the, sec- in the second quarter for 45%, 3 of 14 in the third quarter for 21%, and 5 of 19 in the fourth quarter for 26%, giving them a total of 19 for 56, uh, 33% from the field total overall. Three-point shooting was not their friend today. Uh, they were two for five in the first quarter for 40%, 0 for one in the second for, 100, for 0%, 0 for four in the third for 0%, one for six in the fourth for 16%, ultimately shooting three of 16 for the, for the day, 18%. Um, three-point shooting, and the free throw shooting was pretty solid. They were 14 or 17 overall for 82%. They re- out-rebounded the Golden Lions by two, uh, 41 to 39. They committed 20 fouls. They had 12 assists, 19 turnovers, one block, and seven steals. Uh, this game had seven ties and seven lead changes, so it was a back-and-forth affair pretty much uh, for most of the game until Pine Bluff kind of pulled away late uh, to seal this game. Uh, A&M had 24 points in the paint, nine points over turnovers, six second chance points, two fast break points, and 21 bench points. Uh, the Golden Lions, 16 points over t- uh, 16 points in the paint, 16 points over turnovers, 12 second chance points, four fast break points, and 24 bench points. So, really solid effort for Pine Bluff. Um, they pick up the victory over um, over Alabama and m who was the two seed. So we already got one. One low, high, low seed, high seed, however you, however you want to look at it. Uh, one one underdog team, so to speak, moving on. And like I said, they would take on the win of Alabama State, which is the three seed, and Bethune Cookman, which is the six seed. So um, we'll see how that game turns out um, tomorrow at 11. Um, jumping over to the men's side, uh, this game was not as close. Um, actually, it was n- never really close at all. Um, Grambling picked up an 87 to 87 72 victory over Bethune Cookman. Grambling led his game by 20 at the half, 47 27. And the second half, it was just you know, kind of playing out the string. Um, Bethune Cookman, you know, never really could get anything going, and you know, they they, they closed out their only they, they closed out their first tournament appearance with a one and done. Um, the, you know, this team was kind of young. They, they had some injuries, so they, we'll, we'll see if they come back. But they um, – Gremlin played like a well-armed machine, man. They came out and they took care of business. They did what you're supposed to do in a game like this. You come out and you knock the other team out the box and, you know, you you move on. So uh, I thought it was a very solid outing for Gremlin. You know, you could easily – Lost focus in the second half, or you know, when the game was kind of out of control, uh, out of control as far as the margin goes. But they, they stayed focused and they 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 moving on. So, Grambling awaits the winner of Jackson State and um, Prairie View on uh, they play tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock. 
So that'll be the opponents. Um, the winner of that game will take on Grambling uh, on Friday. So, um, uh, let's see. Let's do it this way. Right, we're going to take a look at at the box score for this game. Um, like I said, not a you know not a not a good outing for for the Wildcats, but you know you live and you learn. You know you're playing in a um, in a in a different environment, new tournament, all of that. You know it's a learning experience. Um, it's tough to get railroaded like that in your first game, but it happens. Um, Dyson led Bethune Cookman with 22 points off the bench. Uh, he was eight of 19 from the field, two of six from three, and four for four from the line. Uh, finished with two rebounds on the night, uh, one assist. Um, also in double figures was Kevin Davis with 19 points. Uh, he had uh, eight of 16 from the field, three of six from three. Uh, he had uh, six rebounds on the night and one assist. Also in double digits was uh, Zion Harmon. Uh, he was uh, two of 10 from the field, one of three from three. He had two rebounds and five assists, finishing with 12 points. And other than that, man, nobody else really got anything going. Joe French did not score. That was That's one of their top scores. He, he did not score. Uh, Marcus Garrett, another one of their top guys, uh, he finished with nine points. So um, just didn't really get a lot. And, you know, this is not a deep team. Uh, they only played uh, eight guys all together. So, you know, they, they just, you know, on, on a night like this, it's tough for a team like this to get anything going. Um when you're facing a team like Gremlin, who played extremely well, got four starters in double figures. Um, Smith with 23, Jordan Smith with 23, uh, Aku with 15, uh, Moten uh, with 12, and, Cow and Christian with 19. Uh, Coward had nine. So your whole starting lineup almost had double digits. Um, yeah, that's tough to beat. You know, you got uh, Christian, eight of 11 from the field, three of five from three. Uh, 0 for 1 from the line. He had two rebounds and three assists on the night and five steals. Um, Moten, 3 of 7 from the field, 1 for 1 from 3, 5 of 6 from the line. He had three rebounds and five assists on the night. Um, Smith was 10 of 13 from the field, 1 for 1 from 3, 2 for 4 from the line. From the, from the line. He had uh, eight rebounds and three assists and three blocks. Uh, Aku, 6 of 10 from the field. Three or four from the line. He had seven rebounds and three blocks. They really controlled this game, man. Seven blocks on the night um, for Gramlin. Um, Gramlin had 40 rebounds. They all rebounded Bethune Cookman by 14. They just dominated them on the boards, 40 to 26. I mean, you know, I mean, when you lose like that, you know, it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really matter. But when you get worked on the boards like that, 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 that hurts you so much. Uh, Gramlin shot 54% from the field on the night. That's, you know, and 63% from three. So they were extremely hot. Um, th that's a tough task for anybody to take out a team that plays defense like Gramlin does, and they're shooting like they did today. Um, that's a tough ask for anybody. Now, they only shot 56% from the line. Um, that's something that, you know, you could always clean up. Um, if you had to nitpick something, it would be that. Like I said, they had 17 offensive rebounds. They just, they just had their way with Bethune Cookman in this game. Uh, 23 assists really shared the ball well. Um, I thought they, you know, they 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 just got a tremendous effort from their starting five. The bench didn't do a lot, um, but they, you know, the starters just they they just led the way. Uh, seven steals for Gramlin on the night and uh, seven blocks. They made it extremely, extremely tough for Bethune Cookman to do anything. Now, Gramlin did turn the ball over 15 times. Um, that's something that, you know, if you want to nitpick, um, that, that's something to nitpick. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make too much out of that in a game like this. Um, this is a team that doesn't turn the ball over a lot. So, you know, it, it was a kind of a ragged game and, you know, those kind of things happen. Uh, Bethune Cookman shot 37% from the field. Uh, 38 from three, which this is a team that shoots, you know, fairly well from three. That's about their average, but they eight for 21. Um, they only shot 37% from the field. They finished with 26 rebounds. They had uh, 14 assists, four steal, four blocks, four steals and no blocks. They turned the ball over 12 times. So didn't really have a lot of turnovers. Um, wasn't really an issue in this game. Gremlin just, you know, they just, 
put together a great first half and you know they 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 kept their foot on the gas and picked up a victory. So like I said, they'll move on to the second round of semifinals and they'll play the winner of Jackson State, the three seed and Prairie View, the six seed. That game takes place tomorrow at two two PM. So, you know, the Tigers got a chance to sit back and, and see, you know, who they are gonna play. Um, moving on to tonight's games, and like I said, we'll be back tonight to recap those two, these two upcoming games. Uh, the women's regular season champ and possible tournament champ. Don't want to jinx it, but you know, everybody's favorite, Jackson State. Uh, they take on the eight seed Grambling at five thirty, and then at eight thirty, the number one seed Alcorn, the Big Bad Braves. They take on the Texas Southern Tigers. That's a very intriguing first round matchup. Um, TSU got in. I said if TSU gets in the tournament, you know, you don't really want to play them. So we're going to find out if I was right on that. But uh, or if the Braves going to move on. So, you know, all these games are on ESPNU. Uh, I mean, ESPN Plus, excuse me. And um, make sure y'all check those out. So we'll be back tonight to uh, recap tonight's sessions, session game. So um, y'all have a good, a good day and we'll catch y'all on the rebound. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.